Greetings. In this video, I'm going to be directly comparing the Fisher S-Bound 112s of just a few years ago with the Mod Shoes Anims of also just a few years ago. And both of these skis of mine are in the longest lengths that they are made. So the S-Bounds are 189 centimeters and the Anims are 195 centimeters. I won't be comparing weight. A lot of the weight difference seems to be in the binding. I will be talking about the differences with the bindings. The S-Bounds are mounted with G3 Targa Ascent free pivot bindings. So they have a tour mode and a downhill mode. Here you can see me skiing them downhill on a slope that's a little too steep for me to be comfortable. And the Anims are mounted with Vole three pin hardwire bindings, which are the lighter of the two choices. And they have a three pin mode and a heel connected mode. Since these skis are cross-country downhill skis, they both have camber, with the Anims having a slightly wider camber when it's not compressed, and the S-Bounds having a slightly stiffer camber. However, both have pretty soft camber. In this image, I'm comparing the length of the scaled section of the skis. The S-Bounds have a longer scaled section coming in at 35 and a half inches, while for the Anims, it's 31 and a quarter. You can also see that the scales on the S-Bounds are set further forward and they have a little notch for the easy skin as well for extra grip. Here I am skiing the Anims on the same steep little slope that I skied the S-Bounds on earlier in this video. This was the same day, just a few minutes later, and I couldn't really tell any real differences. Nonetheless, there is a design difference between the two skis that I'd like to point out. When the camber isn't compressed, you can see right here by the little piece of paper where the contact point is between two skis. When the camber is compressed, the contact point moves down by about 6 inches on the S-Bounds versus only 1 inch for the Anims. Fisher calls this their Nordic rocker. I can only speculate what the effect would be on skiing, but I didn't notice any effect in soft snow. Shout out to Tom M's channel because this is totally something he would do. But on my left foot, I've got the Anim, and on my right foot, Fisher S-Bound 112. I'm skiing these with leather boots and heels connected on both bindings. I'd be hard-pressed to point out any difference in downhill performance between these bindings. I feel like both are perfectly adequate in bringing out the full potential of these skis. Yes. That windridge. The differences between these two bindings aren't really revealed when skiing downhill, but more so when it comes to touring. If you're going to be climbing something steep, I suppose I'd give the edge to the free pivot bindings because of the greater range of motion. This also pairs nicely with the notch for the easy skins on the fishers, and newer models also have a notch in the tip for a full length skin. The advantage of the Vole 3-pin hardwires comes when you want to tour along on something relatively flat. I find it just feels a little more natural with pins versus free pivot. Another advantage of pins is that they allow for no transition between touring and downhill because you can downhill ski just fine on three pins, whereas the free pivot bindings require a simple little transition, but it's still a transition. In this clip, I'm skiing just pins versus downhill mode on the free pivot bindings. It should be noted that pins also add redundancy. If you're on a long tour and your heel cable breaks, it's nice to have something to still be attached to. For the type of skiing that I do the most often, with long tours and a lot of yo-yo laps, I give the edge to the Vole 3 pin hardwires. Little pro tip from a dad. If you're tired of your phone freezing when you're out skiing, just put it in your front pocket on your melee, tuck it into your pants, and carry on. Pardon the intrusive narrator. Anyways, despite my little piece of advice, this uh, clip's gonna be kind of choppy because my phone was freezing. There's one more perk to the hardwire bindings that I want to mention. Because they have the 3-pin connection, they have the so-called rat trap, which allows for different 75mm duckbill boot thickness. With the 
Targa G3 Ascent bindings, you want to make sure that the 75mm duckbill is going to fit nicely into that little slot. Something might feel a little off if you use a boot with a thinner duckbill. I'm including the next part of this video to show the earn part of earning your turns. It wasn't very grueling, but it was a little bit of an uphill through the woods. I'm obviously showing it post-tour as I go back down the tracks that I came up. Finding spots like this involves a lot of maps and poking around aimlessly in the woods. I'll end this video by summarizing my thoughts on these two skis. I'll put more nitty gritty specs in the video description if you're into that. Both of these skis are really good powder skis. I take them on moderate slopes, some people might be able to take them on steeper slopes. They've got similar side cuts. I think they're exactly the same underfoot. The fissures might be slightly wider in the shovel and the anims are actually slightly wider in the tail and they also taper a little earlier in the tail than the S-bounds. I think the slightly wider tail might help to prevent the bodybuilder shape of some skis as the makers at Altai Skis describe it. This seemed to help a little bit with climbing. I didn't notice any difference between the anims and the fissures despite the fissures having a longer scaled pattern. Of course, the fissures also have the easy skin option. What neither of these skis does well with is hard pack, meaning they generally aren't your choice at the resort unless it's a powder day and you're sticking to ungroomed runs. Overall, both of these skis are similar enough that I decided I should sell one set. I'm sticking with the Anims as my skis, mainly because of the hard wires. No knock to the Fisher S-Bound 112s. I felt like I'd be able to sell them for a little more money because they look to be in slightly better condition. I started this particular outing just across this marshy meadow over there where you see the road. Enjoy this final clip of me skiing the Anims in pretty much perfect conditions for either of these pairs of skis.